So let's say you have your Blazor WebAssembly ASP.NET Core hosted application, right? With a client project, a server project, a web API, and also a shared project. This thing then looks like this, home, counter, fetch data. So we are actually making a web service call here. And now you wanna publish everything to Azure using GitHub and even GitHub Actions. Well, that's pretty easy actually. So what you have to do is down here, you go to add to source control and then Git. And then what you can also do is pushing everything to your GitHub account. They're creating a new repository. As you can see here, my local path, I think you know this already with your account and then also the repository name, in my case, Blazor GitHub Actions Azure Tutorial, nice name, right? And let's say we make, it could also be a private repository. So you really do not have to make this public. Let's try this with a private one. I create and push this. And as soon as everything is pushed, I can have a look in GitHub, of course. So here it is, two commits, everything I did a second ago, perfect. Now with that set, we can go to Azure. So here we are. In your case, you need an account, maybe a free account when you haven't checked out Azure before, you can do that and then try everything for free for a certain amount of time. But uh, either way, you have to create a new resource to publish your full stack Blazor WebAssembly application. So let's do that. And here now we choose the web app. So we go to create, you need a subscription, could be a free one, could be, a subscription where you have to pay for that stuff. And then we can give this thing a name, maybe again, Blazor GitHub Actions Azure Tutorial. Awesome name. Then we select code, right? And then your runtime stack. Now in my case, I used .NET 7. In your case, this might be different, but here now let's just say it's a .NET 7 app, could also be a .NET 8 app, of course, if you're watching a bit earlier or .NET 6, if it's another application, in my case, again, .NET 7. Then we can choose between Linux or Windows as an operating system. Now, one little info about that. When you choose Windows, you can directly in the next step, choose your GitHub repository in this wizard here, in this process. But deployment takes way longer. So let's say we wanna use continuous integration here or continuous delivery, continuous deployment. Then as soon as you push something to your GitHub account or to your GitHub repository, then automatically the build process and the deployment process is triggered, but it takes way longer when you choose Windows as operating system. And I guess it's also a bit more expensive. So what I do here now is I choose Linux just for this YouTube tutorial case here. Linux means continuous integration can be configured a bit later, meaning we first create this web app and when this thing is configured then or created, then we can configure continuous integration deployment with our GitHub account. So it really doesn't make a difference. It's just one step more we have to add here. But either way it works, it's way faster. And again, I guess it's cheaper. So Linux in my case, East US is fine for me. Then we have a Linux plan. In my case, it's the basic plan. So this costs a little bit of money. There's also a free plan available. Again, if you want to try this out with Azure, you can uh, also create a free plan, but basic. The biggest difference for me with basic is that I do not have cold starts, meaning that when you're, when you want to work with your deployed application on Azure and you haven't checked out your app and for an hour or something, then the machine is in, let's say, a standby mode. So, so when you then access this application via the address bar here in the browser, for instance, then it takes a couple of not only seconds, could even take some minutes to wake up the machine, your application, and then you see it. And with basic, you do not have this wake up process. The application should be there, should, right? It's still basic directly, it should be there directly. So this is just a little information here. Anyways, we go to the next step, which is deployment. And now here is the step where you configure your continuous deployment. Now I'm a bit surprised because I told you earlier that with Linux, this was not possible and it really wasn't possible a couple of days ago, but now it seems it is possible and I haven't checked that before I started the recording. So please 
bear with me, my apologies. You can already configure this. Again, could be still the case that this changes with another uh, with another plan, right? So here when we um, it shows uh, or when we use a free plan, then could be the case that deployment is not possible. Not sure about that. Sorry about that, really. If you know more about that, please write it down in the comments. But either way, even if you choose Windows now, this is nice because you now see how you can configure this in this process. All right, so here, continuous deployment enabled. And now we need a GitHub account. And this is a crucial step because here, as you can see, we can log in uh, with our GitHub account and we want to give the Azure App Service access to our GitHub account. Let me pull up the settings in my GitHub account first. So there we are. And then we go to settings and here now applications and then OAuth apps, Azure App Service. This is the one that need needs access to your GitHub account. For whatever reason, could be the case that there's something different, also called something with Azure service, something like that, that wants access to your GitHub account. When uh, we uh, want to add GitHub here, our GitHub account, but this does not work. I don't know why this was a problem in my case when I first tried to authorize GitHub here or Azure here for my GitHub account, but please, Make sure that it's the Azure App Service. It, if it's not there, try this a couple of times or just create your web app and then later try to configure the uh, continuous deployment step and then it should work. Also, it could be that this takes a couple of minutes to have an effect. So just make sure Azure App Service, this is the thing that needs the authorization that needs the uh, the access to your GitHub account. And then you see, well, all the data from your GitHub account. I've got a bunch of repositories here. So what I actually wanna have is the Blazor GitHub Actions Azure tutorial, right? So I choose the repository and here even you can choose several branches, not only the master or the main branch, could be any feature branch, whatever you want. And when you choose this, you can actually even preview the YAML file here, but this is not really necessary for us. You see that we're using Ubuntu Linux here. When you choose this configuration here, then this really means whenever you push something to your master branch, in my case, then the deployment building and deployment process will be started. All right, so next we go to networking. For now, net, not that important for us, monitoring, not as well, no tags, so review and create. This is interesting, of course, we have .NET 7, we wanna use the code thingy here, setting here, we have the basic uh, service plan, and also this is our repository. All right, so now let's hit create, and this might take a while. Awesome, deployment is complete. We can now go to the resource or we go to home and then here it is as well. And again, just for your information, when you weren't able to configure deployment with GitHub, with a GitHub repository in the first steps, you can here go to the deployment center, then to the settings. And here then you will also have the ability to choose your GitHub repository. Even there's a link to the master branch in GitHub. And we can also in the overview should be here. Yeah, here with the deployment center. You see that deployment, the last deployment is still in progress. So what we can do actually, we can go back to our GitHub repo. There it is. When I now refresh, we see this little bubble here so we can click on this thing and we see there are some processes going on and build was already done and now we've got our deployment job and this is also now running deploy to azure web app isn't that nice and when this is done we can actually access our application so let's just wait a little again and then we try to access our application awesome job is complete and now here's our URL, the default domain. Let's just open this thing. 
And there we are. And now, for instance, we can go to fetch data and we see that everything works as expected. That's just great. But now the big question is, what happens if we change something, right? So if, when we go back to the GitHub repository and we have a look at our commits, we see now there are three because Azure did some magic here. So let's go back to our repository. And first, let's have a quick look here. Let's fetch incoming commits. We have one and this is done well by me, but actually by Azure. So let's pull this. So we have the current state. And now let's just say to see an effect really, we uh, want to get more than just these five weather forecasts. So here in our get method, we just say now we want to have 500 for instance. So let's save that. And one more thing I want to show you is this. Here, if you test something locally, in the development state of or in the development environment of your application and you also want to see that deployed to Azure, then make sure that this is a little pitfall here. Make sure that you also set this, for instance, to is, uh, come on, production, right? Like that, because the uh, the default way Azure does this is that the environment then is the production environment. And uh, then you won't see, for instance, uh, what's going on in this little scope here, right? So this is what you have to do. If you're wondering, hey, I saw some debugging information or er error information locally on my machine. Now I also want to see that in Azure because I just want to test this. But then again, if this is uh, really your production deployment, then you should definitely remove this again. So let's just uh, keep it as that. And uh, then we see our changes here, 500 weather forecasts and edit production environment for debugging, something like that. We commit everything and also already push this so now when we go back to our repository, you see this little check mark, but now I refresh and now we see a little bubble here again. We can go to details and then we see again that there's the build process, lots of stuff happening here. And when this is done, we will also see the deployment and then we can again go back to our application deployed on Azure for our last and final test. All right, this is done. So back to up our application. We just use this site here again, we refresh and we get a couple more weather forecasts. Isn't that nice? That should be 500. And now the next step would be to make the same thing happen with a database. So how would that work with an Azure SQL database? And if you want to know how to do that, then check out the video here on the screen. Additionally, if you want to know more about Azure, then please write it down in the comments. And if you want to see this complete process professionally in action, then make sure to check out the link in the video description for the upcoming .NET Web Academy. Thanks for watching. Take care.